you have been against this concept for years. But after this disaster in the Gulf of Mexico, my beloved Gulf, soon to be known as the Dead Sea, let me tell you, I have changed my tune. I say if these corporations want the same rights as citizens, they have to have the same accountability as citizens. I know that if my personal negligence were to cause the death of 11 people on an oil platform, let alone the destruction of the entire Gulf of Mexico, you know where I would be? That's right. So I say put the entire payroll of British Petroleum in prison. How do you like your corporate personhood now? One hand in my pocket, one foot in your grave. I don't want to just see the CEO go to prison. I want to see every congressional apologizer. I want to see every CEO, every CIO, every CISO, every CPA, every C3PO go to prison. I want to see every VP, every SVP, every VIP for that matter go to prison. Make an example of them. Like you make an example of the guy who's sitting in prison for growing dope in his own apartment. And if there's not enough room in the entire penitentiary system of the United States for the payroll of British Petroleum, let the guy who's in there for growing dope out to make room for the corporate guy. You got blessing from the Holy Ghost. Fill up your coffee and close the blind. It's getting harder to look outside. I want to see the writers and the actors and those BSBP ad campaigns, Beyond Petroleum, a greener oil company. I want to see those guys go to prison. Picture this with me. I envision whole gas pumps dressed in orange jumpsuits quivering in their little British accent while a large scary man stands over them saying, insert prison joke here. I want to see every seller of British Petroleum go to prison. I want to see every user of British Petroleum go to prison. I want to see every user of Petroleum go to prison. Hell, I want to go to prison. One hand in my pocket. While we watch the coffers of BP and Halliburton and Transatlantic dwindle as they pay not billions, but quadrillions in reparations. Hallie Barber, you can lick my dipstick. I say it's time to bill, baby, bill. Yeah, hey man, could you walk lightly? We got a lot to lose. You hold a dollar tightly when you're walking. You guys need to hire every idle shrimp boat captain in Gulfport, Mississippi, and every uh, every out of work oyster fisherman in Corpus Christi, Texas. Not to mention every out of work seafood restaurant waiter in New Orleans to clean up your mess. Use the community we have. Don't hire Halliburton to do it. Use the community we have in the Gulf Coast. I want to see your shareholders standing on on street corners and overpasses holding out buckets with signs that say we'll work to pay locals for your law. You drink all night and you piss in my pot. Keep on stealing until you get caught. Why are you always playing tricks on me? That's not a rabbit that you got up your sleeve, man. You knew your oil rig was too big to fail. That's why you chose to fly the flag of the Marshall Islands, which is basically an oil company with a flag. One hand in my pocket, one foot in your grave. But since you did choose to fly the flag of the Marshall Islands, I say it makes you a foreigner. Yeah, hey man, could you walk like and ironically now I find myself agreeing with the state of Arizona and I say you should be deported when you're walking to an act like this perpetrated by a foreigner can only be viewed as an act of foreign eco-terrorism and the place you should be deported to is Guantanamo Bay where you can sit 
and your little orange jumpsuits and be waterboarded with water from the Gulf you destroy. Sorry about getting me and Eliza mixed up as to which one was which. We just met, I'm sorry. You're not angry at me, are you? I was in my hometown recently and I 
ran into the kid with a tattoo and I got a chance to tell him how much it meant to me. That I spent the past 20 years of my life traveling around the country making people laugh and I hope that after I die I'll still be doing it. And I talked him into taking off his shirt and I saw it in all its reality. It looked like, like a prison tattoo. Thin lines hanging from aging flesh. He told me that he had done it himself with a sewing needle and a ballpoint pen. He was considering having it removed. And I thought, laughter dies. Not from, from age, but from vanity. And in this case, laser surgery. You're underneath the stairs and you're giving out some glares. The people that you met And it's your first cigarette Now the reason That I was in my hometown Was because I was visiting my mother Who was aging And my siblings told me That it was time to come visit And I did Only while I was there I caught this stomach virus And I got really sick and I found myself in bed. It was my childhood bed. And I looked down the hallway and I saw my mother struggling down the hall with her walker, carrying a tray of chicken noodle soup and saltines, oxygen tubes trailing behind her. She put a thermometer in my mouth. It was the same thermometer she had put in my mouth as a child. I had a 102 degree temperature. She wiped my forehead with a washcloth. You say you're leaving home because you want to be alone. Ain't it funny how it feels when you're finding out it's real? Funny how it feels when you find out it's real. And it's real. Oh, oh how the, the tables had turned. Sugar I had come home to take With care of her, but color. somehow she found strength in my illness. It was the sugar only time in my life it. that I can remember it being glad that I was sick. Too soon. And the only thing that I could do was to lie in bed and savor the taste of salty and chicken noodle soup because I knew that it was going to be the last time that my mother would ever mother me. Thank you very much. It's been a pleasure performing for you on this first set. We're going to come back and do a whole other set. Paul Benoit, I'm Chris Chandler. Thank you very much. We'll be right back.